So something that I got asked about quite a lot is about mouse pads, uh, which is always really surprising to me because I didn't know how many people were actually interested in mouse pads. But uh, yeah, what mouse pad am I currently using? Do I recommend the artisan pads? Which ones have I tried? Lots and lots of questions. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And I think mouse pads recently have been on this sort of trend of things to consider upgrading if you're into first person shooters like myself and you've run out of things to upgrade. And part of that I think is due to this recent wave of some of the more premium options options that are available now. But yeah, after trying quite a few of them, I would say that your choice here does matter. It is pretty important, not as important as like what gaming mouse you're using or maybe uh, like what monitor you're using. But you know, in terms of speed and control, all of these uh, pads offer a pretty different experience. Some of them are pretty similar in terms of like the glide and control and the overall feel. But on one side of the spectrum, we have like really fast pads. And then on the other side of the spectrum, we have like really slow and control focused pads with a lot of stopping pads. So depending on the glide and control of the pad, the characteristics of your aim will be fairly different, let alone just how well you can aim and how accurate you will be. One of the big questions that I get are in regards to these Artisan mouse pads, a very premium mouse pad brand from Japan. So we will get to my thoughts and experience with those. I do also want to clarify that this isn't a list of the best mouse pads that you can buy or a top five best mouse pad list or anything like that. It's simply the ones that I've tried and the ones that I think are good and bad because yeah some of these are bad some are really good and for a lot of them it just kind of depends so let's get started the first mouse pad that i ever bought like the first serious mouse pad that i bought uh, as i was taking first person shooters a bit more seriously about say three years ago uh, was the logitech g640 and this is still a pad that i really really enjoy using today if you told me that hey you have to throw out those artisan pads and never use those again maybe go back to the g640 instead i would be totally okay with that and i I think honestly if you just want to pick up a decently good pad for first person shooter games today and without thinking too hard about it this is probably what I would recommend. In terms of friction you're looking at a medium glide speed which is fairly average in terms of stopping power and control which honestly makes this pretty suitable for a lot of different FPS titles. There are pads on this list that are a lot faster than the G640 and some that are a bit slower but the G640 is just really good at being an overall good no frills mouse pad. This this is also a really popular option for pro Overwatch and pro Apex players and also a lot of Valorant and CS players too. In terms of durability though, that's kind of one of the downsides of this pad. This is a pad that does slow down a little bit more uh, the more you use it. Having said that, for most people, I think that breaking in period and pad slowdown will be so gradual that it's not really going to matter. And once the pad has been used for a few weeks, the feeling is pretty consistent if you keep it clean. The G640 is also decently sized at 460. 60 mils in width, which means that even if you play on a fairly low sensitivity, you should find that to be fairly adequate. But yeah, for only about $40, the G640 is a really solid pad in my opinion. Again, especially if you want something solid without thinking too much about it, you can get the G640 pretty much anywhere and it's suitable for a bunch of different games. We will come back to the G640 in the end because it is actually one of my top recommendations. But then Glorious came out with the new elements pads, uh, the fire, the ice, and the air. And and really, there is only one good option out of these three, and it's this one here, it's called the Fire. So you can think of this as a bit smaller than the G640, and it's more of a control-focused pad, so not as fast as the G640 either. And yeah, I used this one for quite a bit and really, really enjoyed using it. The other two pads in this series are the Ice and the Air, which honestly, they're just obnoxiously fast pads. Like even in first person shooters where you're continuously moving your mouse and you know you, you don't really require that much stopping power, uh, you still require a little bit of control and you're just not getting that at all with these two pads. Uh, and the Air is just like a paper thin pad that's like an adhesive hard pad. Uh, I don't really recommend that at all. Kind of looks cool, you know, I appreciate, you know, it's kind of different. But yeah, in terms of actually improving your aim, the air and the ice pad, not something that I would recommend. Now, I eventually stopped using the Glorious Fire Pad because I just kept running out of mouse pad space. It's only 430 mils in width, which is a real shame in my opinion, not ideal if you play on low sensitivity. So looking for something a little bit bigger than the Glorious Fire Pad, and hey, maybe with a little bit more control because that's what I liked about the Glorious Pad, 
uh, I went for the Zowie GSR, so much bigger and a lot more control. This is one of the most used mouse pads across CSGO and Valorant because it pairs pretty well with the aiming style in those games, which is steadily holding an angle one at a time. And yeah, this is a very control oriented and slow pad. Tons of stopping power on this thing, which will help you snap to targets as tight as possible, but continuously tracking a target is quite tough. So for games like Apex, for example, where you're continuously tracking an enemy, you do feel like you're constantly uh, like fighting the mouse pad and you know fighting that stopping power on the GSR. And the result is that your cursor ends up feeling a little bit jittery. I also found that since there is so much damn stopping power on this thing, uh, micro adjustments are very, very hard to correct. So like, let's say you don't land your shot perfectly and let's say you over aim or under aim, you know, correcting that, especially if you're on a moderate sensitivity or a fast sensitivity, you know, that is really, really difficult. And what ends up happening is that you tend to overcorrect. At least that's my experience with the GSR. Still though, if you exclusively play CSGO or Valorant and you're a low sense player, this is a pad that you might want to consider if you want something with a ton of control. But now let's talk about the Artisan mouse pads, which is what I think most of you are probably here for. Uh, you know, I, I think Artisan mouse pads are super, super hyped up, probably about as hyped up as mouse pads can get. And so the big question then, is that hype justified? And I think, in terms of build quality, yes, these are some of the most premium feeling and highest build quality mouse pads that you'll ever see. The stitching on the edges is perfect, the rubber edge is the grippiest that you'll probably ever find, and it comes packed completely flat, so there's no rolling out or anything like that. The XL size of the Artisan pad is also perfect, in my opinion, at 490 mils in width, so running out of space is something that rarely ever happens. Artisan pads also come in three different hardness options, extra soft, soft, and mid. Extra soft being the softest and slowest of the three and mid being the hardest and the fastest. To keep things simple, the three artisan pads that I've tried are all XL and they're all in soft as well and honestly probably wouldn't have it any other way. So the first artisan mouse pad that I tried was the Zero, which I think is one of their slower mouse pad options. I think it's their second slowest option. So as a control pad, it's really, really good for games like Valorant and CSGO. In terms of glide, it is a little bit slower than the Logitech G640 but noticeably faster than the Zowie GSR. Now, in terms of durability though, that's where I think it is a much better option than those two. Whereas the G640 and the GSR have what is kind of known as a break-in period. So after a couple of weeks, the pad is kind of slowing down, slowing down until it feels eventually just pretty consistent for the next few months. The Artisan Zero feels exactly the same as the day I bought it. That's saying a lot because I've been using this one pretty much every day for quite a few hours uh, for about two months. One thing that I do not like about this mouse pad though is when it comes to cleaning it. So usually cleaning a mouse pad is pretty simple. Grab a lint roller, roll all the dust off and then the surface should be nice and smooth again. With the Zero, a lot of those tiny hairs and dust fibers, they just get stuck and embedded in the pad, which is really, really annoying. And you do feel them when when you're using the mouse and swiping from side to side. So yeah, maintaining the clean surface of the pad is pretty difficult the more you use it. Some people probably won't be bothered by it, but for me, you know, having OCD and just feeling little bits of fibers on the mouse pad, it is really, really annoying. I think eventually it would get to the point where you just couldn't get the zero back to its brand new condition. That is not a problem though on the next mouse pad, which is the Artisan Hayati Otsu, again in soft, extra large. Now the Artisan pad, a little bit faster than the zero, actually noticeably faster, but you still have a bit of control and stopping power. In my experience, this pad has been absolutely unreal for games like Apex, where most of the time you're continuously tracking a target non-stop, and that style of aiming just feels incredibly smooth and uninterrupted on the Heiati Otsu. Now, if you mostly play games like Valorant and CS, this is probably not what I would recommend. There's just not enough stopping power and control, and landing headshots is actually kind of difficult unless you have insane mouse control. Again though, for Apex, maybe Fortnite, Call of Duty, Battlefield, those kind of games, this is like the perfect pad. Movement just feels amazing and just the smoothness when it comes to tracking, it's unlike any other pad that I've used. The next two mouse pads on this list, uh, I don't have as much experience with, so in terms of giving like a long-term
long-term user review. Uh, I don't really have anything for you, um, but simply they're just too fast for me personally. So I use these for a couple of hours and yeah, I was like, nope, I'm going back to the Heiati Otsu for sure. So this one here is the Artisan Heian. So quite a bit faster than the Heiati Otsu. It's like a noticeable jump in my opinion with uh, equal trade-off in terms of control and stopping power as well. So yeah, a bit too fast for me personally. I think my aim on this thing is not great at all. It's just really inconsistent and unstable. And I also don't like how grippy the surface is when it comes to hand and arm contact. I might give it another shot down the road though because I know a lot of people love the Arzen Heian, but for now I think the Heianti Otsu is the better pick for me and for most people probably overall. And finally, the last one is the Razor Strider. Again, not too much time on this pad at all, but you know, quite a bit of hype behind this one. It does try to emulate the feel that the Artisan Heian kind of goes after. So it has that textured feel, although this one is a lot more textured. And believe it or not, it is actually faster and uh, has less control than the Heian as well. So again, that kind of speed is not something that I'm really a big fan of. Honestly, I kind of struggle to find a scenario or game where you would want to trade off that much speed and control. I do think even for games like Apex, where you are mostly moving the mouse, you do still need some control and stopping power just to kind of control things and keep things moving in the right direction. And then again, in terms of like the sandpapery grippy texture, it's just not a comfortable pad to use in my opinion. If you're someone who like rests your forearm or the bottom of your wrist on the pad, uh, you do get that kind of grippy and stuck feeling, which is not the most comfortable feeling. So that pretty much wraps up my overall thoughts and experiences. But now let's talk about some recommendations. So in a perfect world, I would say that this right here is probably the number one mouse pad in my opinion. For most people, when it comes to like a range of FPS games, the Artisan Zero. It's just really balanced in terms of gliding control. Not too fast, not too slow, but just gives most people, I think, what they're after. The only problem is that it's pretty much out of stock. It's like the out of stock pad. Uh, it's becoming really, really popular as time goes on and maybe more players use it and uh, you know more people become aware of it. Uh, but unless you have like the Discord link for the Artisan stock notification, you're probably not going to have much luck getting your hands on an Artisan Zero. So, you know, if you just don't want to mess around with any of that stuff, I would probably just recommend getting a Logitech G640 instead. So again, G640, a bit faster, but once broken in, it's a very similar aiming experience in terms of the glide and control. It also stays way cleaner and it's like half the price. So the G640, excellent option in my opinion, plenty of pros across different games are using it and their aim is insane. And the last of, I guess, the top three list, if you want to call it that, is if you want something a bit faster without trading off too much control, I would recommend the Artisan Heiati Otsu. Again, a bit hard to find, but definitely not as out of stock as the Zero. I got this one from eBay, and for games like Apex specifically, I think this is the mouse pad to be getting. Tracking just feels insanely free and unrestricted, movement feels great, and the overall quality and cleanliness of the pad is just unmatched. So that pretty much wraps everything up. I will link these mouse pads down below for those of you who are interested. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.